So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs>
varying degrees, right? But ultimately, you want to say that like your country, there's some value in your country, the people of your country. You want to be proud of your country. And so here we have, ladies and gentlemen, the great divide. But what Tucker Carlson speaks for is populism, right? And that is obviously the foundation of Trumpism. And so Tucker Carlson, well, that might make a lot of sense. You never like, did you ever think that Mike Pence was really on board with MAGA? Did you ever think that Mike Pence was really on board with the brand of governance that Donald Trump was pushing? No, Mike Pence was along for the ride. The idea of Tucker Carlson has been discounted by many people close to Trump because they assume he'd never pick somebody who could outshine him. And Trump's staff is convinced correctly that Carlson can't be controlled. But the two men talk a lot, and obviously they had the uh, most, one of the most viewed interviews in the history of American politics. Tucker Carlson's interview with Donald Trump is like 400 million views, something like that, on X. That was the night of the first GOP debate. And again, we're going to get to highlights of the GOP debate last night in just a second, because it was wild one, man. Others likely to wield power in the second Trump term share a lot in common with Carlson. They're full, proud MAGA warriors anti-GOP establishment zealots and eager and willing to test the boundaries of executive power to get Trump's way. They include Stephen Miller, friend of the show, obviously, uh, and the architect of ensuring that Donald Trump actually does get the policies that he wants. See, this is what's amazing about the way that these, these kind of stories are written. When Democrats win, it's seen as a right to govern situation in America. When Democrats win, that's the will of the people. And we must enact as extreme and as radical and as cancerous of policies as possible because, well, that's democracy. The people chose that. Elections have consequences, Barack Obama said, right? This is an extension of the will of the people, the right to govern, the charge to govern. Yet when Republicans win, it's, it's like, couched as, oh man, these people will help Trump get his way. Yes, idiots, that's what the election was about. In 2016, we wanted a wall. We wanted Hillary Clinton to be locked up. Do you understand? That's what we wanted. And that's what we still want. This is this one final thing I'll read from this article, which is great. Mike Davis, Donald Trump Jr. has floated Davis the former chief counsel for nominations for uh, Senate Judiciary Chairman Chuck Grassley to be Trump's interim attorney general, saying that it would be a shot across the bow for the swamp. In public auditions for the job, Bombastic Davis has promised a three-week reign of terror. <laughs> That's our show. Uh, uh, in which he would put kids in cages and prosecutors and journalists that have gone after Trump telling MSNBC's Mendy Hassan that he has his spot picked out in the D.C. gulag, a source close to Trump campaign, told us the AG uh, is the office where Trump is most, like, most likely to make a shocking pick with the defiant view, you want to weaponize the DOJ, mother effers? Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness gracious. Straight into my veins. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what does Donald Trump think about Tucker Carlson as VP? What does he think? What have, what have we heard about this? Is this is this in the realm of possibility? Well, Donald Trump asked directly about it. Have a listen. Would you consider Tucker Carlson on your VP list? Oh, I wow. want to give I want to give you a hypothetical here. You're a big sports fan. You know, like Nick Saban's going to retire at some point. And if you talk to the athletic director at Alabama, he would say he has a list. So, would Tucker Carlson be on your list of potential VPs? And how many names might be on that list as you sit and look and survey the political field? Well, first of all, you know, I did my first, uh, you could call it counter-programming, but I, I won't call it that. But uh, Tucker wanted to do an interview during the first debate. And I think you know, because this is what your business is, we broke every record. Monster audience. In history, yeah. I think it just hit over 300 million people. Talk about it. Would you consider it's, it's Tucker, though, that they, based on the I numbers? like Tucker a lot. I guess I would. I think I'd say I would because he's got great common sense. You know, when they say that you guys are conservative or I'm conservative, it's not that we're conservative. We have common sense. So what does common sense look like? Common sense looks like putting your country first. 
which was on full display when Tucker Carlson disemboweled Mike Pence. Watch. Promised them 33 Abrams tanks in January. I heard again two weeks ago in Ukraine, they still don't have them. We've been telling them we'll train their F-16 pilots, but now they're saying maybe January we'll let somebody transfer some jets. I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, have you, I know you're running for president. You are, distra you. You you are distressed notice. that the Ukrainians don't have enough American tanks. Every city in the United States has become much worse over the past three years. Yeah. Drive around, there's not one city that's gotten better in the United States, I, and it's visible. Our economy has degraded, the suicide rate has jumped, public filth and disorder and crime have exponentially increased, right. and yet your concern is that the Ukrainians, a country most people can't find on a map, who've received tens of billions of U.S. tax dollars, don't have enough tanks. Right. I think it's a fair question to ask, like, where's the concern for the United States in that? Well, it's not my concern. In the perfect explanation of the neocon worldview, we, sh we should be thankful for Mike Pence for the, like, I don't know, life of a house fly that landed on Mike Pence's hair, time that he spent inside of the presidential arena. Mike Pence ran for president for like seven seconds. When did he drop out? Last month? Last month? When did Mike Pence drop out? Yeah, again, life of the house fly, the fly that lands on Mike Pence's head. But for that time, he really did unbelievable and irreparable damage to the neocon worldview by saying things like that. He said true things. So thanks, Mike. America's not my concern, Mike Pence says. More tanks for Ukraine. Do you have potholes in your street? Are there fentanyl addicts on your block? Do you know somebody who lost a child to fentanyl? Have you seen what the inner cities in America look like? This place is decaying at like a exponential rate. Have you checked on the national debt? Have you seen the state of our military? How about just the state of our cities? Mike Pence, not my concern. Ukraine needs a border wall. Have you seen our border, Jack? Yeah. So Tucker Carlson, of course, uh, evaporating Mike Pence on the debate stage and doing it with a flamethrower would make an excellent actual uh, purveyor of Donald Trump's worldview. How about Tucker Carlson talking about Donald Trump? What does Tucker Carlson think of Trump? Go. Uh, where am I on Trump now? Well, I, I love Trump. Um, personally, I think we're going to see Trump's emergence as as the most significant thing to happen in American politics in 100 years because he reoriented the Republican Party um, against the wishes of Republican leaders. Uh, but when I think about Trump right now, so it's July of 2023, you know, I'm struck by his foreign policy views. You know, Trump is the only person um, with stature in the Republican Party, really, who's saying, wait a second, you know, wh why are we supporting an endless war in Ukraine? And that, you know, leaving aside whether Trump's going to get the nomination or get elected president or would be a good president, you know, I can't even assess that. All I can say at this point is I'm so grateful that he has that position. He's right. And everyone in Washington's wrong. Everyone. Mm. And Trump is right on that question. Yeah, that's a, such a perfect distillation of tr of popular. It's such a perfect distillation of what Trump stands for. Why do people hate Trump? If Tucker Carlson were to run on this ticket, and I don't know, I know Tucker Carlson, and I know Trump world pretty well, and I see no indications that this couldn't happen, right? Tucker has regularly said, I don't want to be in politics. I never, I'm not doing this for power spent most of his life in Washington, D.C. He never tried to run for office then. But it's amazing what happens when you start to actually feel the pressures around you and take a look, survey the nation that you love. And there's a lot of people that do a lot of crazy stuff to save the places that they love. The, their nations, their countries. The globalist doesn't want borders. They want to flood our border. The globalist doesn't want there to be nations. They want there to be one blob, one Borg, that they control in its entirety. That's the goal, to reduce all people to numbers. No religion, no nationality, no borders, no nations, no traditions, nothing. And Tucker's saying that's wrong. 
And the reason why people hate Trump is that he stands against that. Watch. They're trying to control what you say because they know that if you say it, nothing will ever be the same. And this is exactly why they hate Trump. I'm watching Trump. I'm thinking to myself, the core question, which no one ever asks, which is why do they hate him so much? I mean, honestly, why do they hate Trump so much? It's the talking. It's the talking. It's not because Trump's program is so radical. Are you joking? He'd be, if this were 1985, he'd be like a center left liberal. It's not radical at all. That's fascism. Are you joking? No. No, it has nothing to do with what he does. It has everything to do with the fact that for whatever reason, his brain is not entirely controlled by the people in charge. And because he's not entirely controlled, well, first of all, it tells you that everybody else is entirely controlled. If like Trump is the one they hate the most, like what did Trump do wrong? I mean, you could say, oh, well, he's orange or whatever, okay, fine. But like, has he really committed a crime so severe that we should send him to prison for the rest of his life? That's insane. They hate Trump because they fear Trump. And they fear Trump not because of what he might do, but because what he might say. You're never punished for telling lies. You're only punished for telling the truth. When Donald Trump says they're destroying our nation, when Donald Trump says he wants to be a dictator on day one just to close the border and to drill in this country and to make America strong, they hate him because he tells the truth. And he's not controlled. And this is what you saw, and we'll play you an entire series of clips of how Nikki Haley last night is proven to be the controlled Muppet of the donor class, of the industry class, of the corporate class. Nikki Haley doesn't care about what Republican voters think. She is literally a walking Borg, a blob that can't stand on her own two feet and is truly nonsensical when she comes face to face with realistic talking points for what people care about in life. There's a pothole in front of my house. Why has nobody fixed that in years? Nobody thought to fix that in years. Why do I pay taxes? Why aren't you considering us and our lives beautifying and making our lives easier, better? Isn't that the point? That is the only purpose of government is to serve the people who, who fund it, who create it. But they don't make those connections. Donald Trump does. And that is why last week, Tucker Carlson said something he'd never said before, which is that he is full on MAGA, that he's full on supporting Trump. Tucker Carlson has never uh, thrown in for a specific presidential candidate, Tucker Carlson did so in speaking with Roseanne and said it very elegantly. Why does he support Trump? Watch. What do you think? I certainly support Trump. I'll tell you that. And I can tell you, I mean, I've always agreed with Trump's policies, always. And I lost friends over it. Um, but, and I've never really actively supported anybody because it's not my job to actively support people. I right. watch, you know, right. I like to watch. Um, but <laughs> I'm a voyeur. Yeah, <laughs> but I became an active Trump supporter when they raided Mar-a-Lago last summer, the summer of 2022. That that that's just, that can't stand. No, that can't. And that I was something. agree with Trump on a lot, but even if I disagreed with Trump on a lot, I'd still be a Trump supporter because you cannot allow that. You cannot allow the, you know, the regime, the president of the United States, to use the Justice Department to knock the front runner out of the race. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. So it's bigger than Trump. It's bigger than Biden. It's a question of, you know, do you want to live in a free country with a functioning justice system? You know, that's exactly. And right. so I'm voting for Trump. And if they convict him, I will send him the max donations and I will lead protests. That's mm -hmm. how I feel. That's how I feel. Because too. and by the way, if I thought that he had committed some real crime, I wouldn't feel that way. But he didn't. Mm -hmm. He and Biden are both found with classified documents at home, along with every other former high level federal official in history. But only Trump is indicted. Like, tell me how that works. Oh, shut up. Tucker Carlson, you've never heard him say something like this. If they indict Trump, I'll donate to the max and then I'll lead the marches. Now, Tucker and Trump have marched together before. Check this out. This is at UFC in Madison Square Garden at a fight. There's Tucker, Kid Rock, Donald Trump, Dana White, Don Jr. Walking in to the hero's welcome. Look at that. 
30,000 people on their feet cheering. Tucker Carlson laughing maniacally as they walk in. Is that the ticket you want? Is that is that the next administration? What position will Kid Rock have in the next administration? Hmm. Hmm. Department of um, Education. Department of Energy. Ladies and gentlemen, um, that's the energy. That is the energy. Have you ever seen an arena cheer for Joe Biden? Have you ever seen a phone booth worth of people cheer for Joe Biden? Would Joe Biden ever avail himself to walking into an arena like that? Of course not. The entire place would rain down booze upon him because it's fake. What Joe Biden's doing is fake. It's not real. There's no real support for Joe Biden. It's utterly manufactured, propped up, manufactured, created. It's not, it's not real. Fagazi, Fagazi. That's why it's not hitting. It's, it's why they're in a very dangerous spot right now. The Joe Biden psyop isn't working. You could argue it didn't work the first time. It's not working now. It's only decayed. It's only deteriorated, much like Joe Biden. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, in every single interview, it seems to be aging in reverse, getting younger, more fit, and more importantly, um, the energy of the movement seems to be coalescing, seems to be bringing people in. This is just fascinating. It's something to, uh, to know, right? Because pre presumably, if you're watching this, you're either part of the MAGA movement, full on ultra MAGA, right? Or you're MAGA light, or you're MAGA curious. But I got to tell you, like, there's something magical that's happening here, and you can see it belied in the data. Look at this. Joe Biden, the median for Joe Biden, Joe Biden, obviously the blue line, the median for Joe Biden is kind of the same. Joe Biden isn't gaining support. He's losing support. You see it decay and you see it bounce up around here. The median for Joe Biden is like low 40s for his uh, for his election. This is the election polling average, right? And again, these polls are rigged. But look at what Trump's done. What Donald Trump has done has been to consistently month over month, I believe this is for the entire year of 2023. This entire this entire chart is for the for 2023. For this year, Donald Trump has steadily triumphantly and monstrously grown his lead, brought people in, created a larger movement, gained momentum. Whereas Joe Biden has flatlined or decayed uh, he's not, he like, it's, it's not like he's pulling from Biden necessarily. Again, Joe Biden just kind of like flatlined. There's a ceiling for Joe Biden. Donald Trump is now skyrocketing, meaning he's pulling in, he's bringing in new people. And why? There's one ad. This was something that was created by the internet. This is not an official Donald Trump ad, but it could be. That has Tucker's voiceover. That so crystallizes why this phenomenon is happening. Have a listen. This is what you could and should get if Tucker Carlson is vice president for Donald Trump. This is the style of ad that could be cut. Not only is this the most powerful ad I've ever seen, even though it's not an official Trump ad, um, but this also perfectly crystallizes the moment that we're in right now. The ad is called, Why? Why Trump? Tucker, take it away. Millions of Americans sincerely love Donald Trump. They love him in spite of everything they've heard. They love him often in spite of himself. They love Donald Trump because no one else loves them. The country they built, the country their ancestors fought for over hundreds of years, has left them to die in their unfashionable little towns, mocked and despised by the sneering halfwits with finance degrees, but no actual skills, who seem to run everything all of a sudden. Whatever Donald Trump's faults, he is better than the rest of the people in charge. At least he doesn't hate them for their weakness. Donald Trump, in other words, is and has always been a living indictment of the people who run this country. That was true four years ago when Trump came out of nowhere to win the presidency. And it's every bit as true right now. Trump rose because they failed. It's as simple as that. If the people in charge had done a halfway decent job with the country they inherited, if they'd cared about anything other than themselves, even for just a moment, Donald Trump would still be hosting Celebrity Apprentice. 
but they didn't. Instead, they were incompetent and narcissistic and cruel and relentlessly dishonest. They wrecked what they didn't build, they lied about it. They hurt anyone who told the truth about what they were doing. That's true, we watched. America is still a great country, the best in the world, but our ruling class is disgusting. A vote for Trump is a vote against them. That's what's going on in this country. That was a less than 90 second poetic distillation of what is happening right now in the political landscape. It was, it's perfect. They hate a ruling class who inherited a nation and forgot about them. In fact, wants them to die in their unfashionable little towns while idiots with finance degrees, but no skills run everything all of a sudden. Donald Trump remembered the forgotten man and woman and gave them pride again in the nation that their ancestors fought for, died for, is buried in the ground of, the soil of. It plucks at the very strings of your heart. It's emotional watching it. And it's why I fully endorse Tucker Carlson as VP. What's the point of a vice president? To be a messenger for the president. The president's job is obviously to present the vision for the country, to be someone who can elect, be elected at the top of the ticket. The vice president's job is to be the messenger for that man or woman. And there you are. The perfect messenger is Tucker. So on that note alone, you have to say, this guy would make an awesome vice president. And again, Melania Trump, according to reporting breaking at time of show is now endorsing Tucker Carlson as VP. Melania Trump wants it. Why? And I'm reiterating here, but it's really important. She wants it. The former first lady uh, uh, wants Tucker Carlson because he would be a powerful onstage extension of her husband. The former first lady has made a few, few campaign appearances at the time, but a Trump Carlson ticket might encourage her to hit the trail. I would call it Trump Tucker 2024. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? I think that that would be absolute gold.